In his prime, Steve Obradovich had a signature move. In an early round game against an intimidated and overmatched opponent, and when the game was all but done, Obradovich would wind up for his powerful left-handed attack, intentionally miss the ball, and bump it over with his head, adding insult to injury. The move pretty much sums up Steve Obradovich. Playful, theatrical, and yes, just a little bit obnoxious. Over an almost two-decade career, Obradovich, better known as OB, made the sand the stage for his one-man show in which everyone else, opponents, fans, teammates, and especially referees, were bit players to his starring role. He glowered, yelled, needled, teased, and blustered his way through every match and in the process produced some of the most compelling volleyball of his era. When you pulled up your beach chair to catch an OB match, one thing was for sure, you were about to be entertained. Underneath all the bluster, though, OB had the athletic skills to back it up. He played volleyball and football at USC and won both a Rose Bowl and a Volleyball National Championship in the same year. At the tender age of 21, with partner Chris Marlowe, OB won the biggest tournament of them all, the Manhattan Open, topping the greatest players of that era, including Jim Mingus, Greg Lee, and Matt Gage. Shortly after winning Manhattan, OB formed a partnership with Gary Hooper, another flamboyant player, and the two became mainstays on the open circuit and fan favorites, or fan villains depending on your perspective. OB and Hooper won seven Opens together, including the 1979 Hermosa Open. From 1977 through 1982, OB and Hooper never finished lower than fifth place in an Open tournament, a remarkable run of consistency. Obradovich had a cannon for a left arm, allowing him to constantly challenge taller blockers, and he possessed a deceptive cut shot that kept defenders honest. He also had one of the best setting touches of his generation, and in the late 1970s era, when the calls became increasingly tight, OB was one of few players to consistently handset. As the money grew in the mid to late 1980s, OB found professional success with several other partners, including Ricky Ludes, John Hanley, and Craig Moothart. But for his well-known aversion to practice, OB could have no doubt extended his success even deeper into the money era of the sport. Underneath all of OB's bullying and ranting and raving was one of the most generous and well-liked players on tour. He could be screaming at an opponent one minute and enjoying a post-game beer with that same opponent the next. During football season, he employed half the tour at Julie's, his family restaurant near USC. OB was often referred to as the McEnroe of beach volleyball. But, if you ask Steve, he would say Johnny Mack was the Steve Obradovich of tennis. The McEnroe comparison only went so far, however. While McEnroe generally seemed angry at the world, OB never was. There were no demons torturing Steve Obradovich, causing him to lash out. Instead, he saw beach volleyball as a simple stage play, four players and a referee, and realized that what the show needed more than anything else was drama, action, tension, and, you guessed it, a villain or two. And OB was happy to star in that role.